Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to control your Terraria T-Shox um, server from anywhere. You can control it from either home, an office, from work, from your smartphone, anywhere that you have internet access. So the way we're going to do it is we are going to use uh, something called T-Server Web made by Xghost. It's basically just a website. He's advertising it on the T-Shock forums. You can read a little bit more about it if you get on the T-Shock forum. But the website is called T-Server Web, and it looks like this. So if you click register now, create yourself an account, and I'm going to show you how to get your server ready. So if we open up our T-Shock folder, and then you see that we have our subfolder T-Shock going to there. And on the config file, we'll right click it, edit it with Notepad or Notepad++. And on line 58, you'll notice REST API enabled. Well, by default, it's set to false. So I want you to set that to true. And for this REST API port, 7878 you can leave that default at 7878 that's fine um, you just want to make sure that you watch my how to port forward to host a Terraria server video because I explain port forwarding you're going to have to port forward this port also so you're going to port forward to your Terraria server port which is probably 7777 and you're also going to have to create a separate port forward for 7878. So um, they're, they're both going to port forward to the same place, which is wherever your Terraria server happens to be located, whatever computer. Okay, so watch that video, learn how to do that. So we're going to port forward these additional ones. We're going to save this, and then we're going to go back, and we're just going to go ahead and start our server. just load any world so I can show you I'm gonna leave the default port you'd enter whatever port for your server okay and now I'm gonna show you a little bit more about the website that's gonna control your server so after you create an account and you go to my account it'll look similar to, to this um, you're gonna click on add server choose a nickname for your server I'm just gonna call this home server 2 and for the server IP it's asking for your public IP address just like you would give to your friends to connect um, through the internet to your server so I go to what's my IP org and I'll copy down my IP address and I'll paste it here now for my server port, I left it on the default. Now remember, I've always, I've, I've also port forwarded this um, through my router. Okay, so you, you would use whatever number you've port forwarded for your server. And for the server password, I have none, but you would enter it right here if you had one. And I'm gonna leave the max players a uh, default. So we'll click on the T-Shock config tab up here. Now for the server API port, I left it the default of 7878. Now for the username and password, it's looking for an account that has the REST API uh, permission. And right now, as far as I know, the only one that has that permission is the super admin account. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an account um, specifically for controlling this server remotely. So inside your T-Shot console window, you can just add a user. So we'll do user forward slash user add. I'm going to name this account remote just so I know it's my remote account. I'll just leave the password 123 and I'll put this in the super admin account and then I'll hit enter 
It's going to give me an error because I've already created this account before, which is fine. Uh, I just wanted to show you how to do it easily through the console window. So we'll go ahead and enter that now. So the username was remote, password was 123. Of course, I suggest using a stronger password than that. This is just for the video. So the next thing you want to do is if you click on public listing and you want to list your server publicly so people can search it out and join it, then you can hit yes there. But if you just want it to remain private, leave it on no. Just go ahead and hit add server like so okay see I've already done this before so I'm just gonna remove this just so we don't have the duplicate there to confuse you okay go back to my servers so as you can see it's online it would say offline if there was some sort of a problem um, and if it if it doesn't say online right away and you're pretty sure you did everything right, um, it could just be because it takes a while for this to show up sometimes. Give it 5-10 minutes. So now to manage the server you just click here and now you can execute commands, manage the players, a user editor, um, change groups, add groups, manage that. Um, do different things in the world, manage your bands, your player bands. And I'm just going to join this server just so you can kind of see what it looks like when a, when a player joins. I'm going to join with new guy. I'm just going to join and just register really fast. Some passwords one, two, three. Okay. So I'm just in the default group. I'm just a new player. And if we go back to manage server, or view server, sorry, you see that there is currently one player on, see, one user. So in this run box right here, you click manage. And anything you type here, it would be as if you were sitting home in front of it, in front of this console window. Um, typing in your commands. Okay, that's what this line is for right here, this space. So after you're done typing it, hit submit. And let's look at the players. Go to the player manager. Okay, so here's it tells me uh, you know where I'm connecting from, the group I'm in, and my exact position on the map. And I can click on my username it can tells me the group I'm in. I can also change the group. Look, I can change to the default group or anything I've created very easily. And now I've just made that person um, in into the default group. Okay, so you can see user editor. Let's go to there. Let's see if we can find new guy. Okay, here I am, new guy. I have to see, it's case sensitive, so you have to spell it exactly as it's written on their character name, like when I joined. And then I can also make changes there, just like you saw. Bands, no bands right now. You can ban from this uh, from this console run section, and then they would show up here. You can manage your world. Okay, you can spawn meteor, save world, toggle blood moon, toggle autosave, kill all NPCs, things like that. It also tells you a little bit of information about it. And over here, group manager. It's really nice. You can create a group, name it, whatever you want, and give it a chat color. This is the chat color, RGB, red, green, blue, saturation. If you don't know what that is, look up RGB charts. Anyway guys, you can edit groups and permissions. See if we go to the guest group. See, these are all the permissions. If you don't know what these are, um, go ahead and go back to this um, T-Shock 
website. So I'm back on the T-Shock website. Go to install. And then it says commands and permissions list. And this will give you an expl explanation on what all of these commands and permissions are for all the groups listed here. And if you want to add to that, um, you can modify permissions. You can add permissions, remove permissions, and then save it. So this kind of makes managing your server, even if um, it's not remote, it still makes it really easy. Anyway, guys, I think that's everything. Um, if you have any problems with getting your server to work or port forwarding, let me know. Just watch my video on port forwarding. It should help you guys. But this is a, a really nice way to manage your server remotely. And I want to give props to Xghost for making this. And if you guys have any other questions, let me know. Thanks.